Hi, welcome back to my channel, Antoinette here. And it has arrived finally. We have the art version of the Serpent and Peacock Tarot deck from Libra Moon. And um, most people that I've seen have the first version, which comes in a tin. That is available on Libra Moon's website, I do believe. And I have got the second version, which is the art version. And it's, um, as it says here, these are signed and numbered editions. And there were 750 produced of this deck and it comes with extra cards. Moving forward, I don't know what other editions might appear, but um, I don't have the first version. So this will just be a look at this version. And um, I am now aware of one card that is, uh, I would love to have seen reproduced and given in this, which would be the moon card. But had I not seen that particular video, I would never have known any difference. And uh, this would still have been an amazing deck. It still is an amazing deck. But yeah, I, I, I am now um, wondering, just for one card, do I need the other deck? But uh, <laughs> that's me being me and not part of this story. Anyway, this was a Kickstarter deck that I backed, which was recent. So it's a 2023 edition, which it does say quite clearly here. This one comes in a hefty um, magnetic closure box. And I also bought the art book that comes with it. This was an additional to the deck. So this is the deck. And then this is the book that you can have as an extra. So we talk about the book first. Let's just bring you down a little bit. So you don't need the book to read the deck because the deck comes with its own book. But this is the one that tells us about the artwork on the cards, whereas the book in the deck doesn't. Um, So it's a hardback book um, produced by Libra Moon. And if you want to go to their websites, it is www.serpentandthepeacock.com. Um, and that's where you'll find um, anything that's for sale from this, this person. It is published and distributed by Libra Moon. So it says quite clearly there. And um, this website or um, person behind Libra Moon also does um, Zodiac reports. So we'll have a quick look at the first card because I know it's probably where most people are going to land on this um, book. So here we have the name of the artwork for this card. And this is the Ace of Wands, as it tells us there. So we know the artwork is um, best there. There we have the artists, I'm guessing. I'm not an art person, so I am a bit rubbish at working out what all the lines mean and in what order they go with. I'm assuming this is the location. Artist is Manuel Fields, which is there. Copyist Angelo's uh, there, which is there. Oh, we're doing well. I can't pronounce anyone's names. Location is Paris, France, and the date of this piece of art in particular is 1566. So that's the nice thing to know about the artwork that's in the card. And then what you can see there is the original inspired art. And then we can see when it's become the Ace of Wands, how the image has been kind of cropped in to take what we need. And um, we've got the wand inserted there. Um, what we don't have, so I'm not sure. So we've got a stamp with SG on it and we also have a signature here. So we do have a signature, but we don't have the stamp. So I'm not sure if that's purposefully done because I'm guessing the stamp SG is for this word here. And then what do we have? So we have the meanings behind the owl in Greek mythology. So it talks about it here, it tells us about um, its link to Minerva. Owl has been used as a symbol of knowledge, wisdom since the early Middle Ages. Ones representing our passions, our talents, creativity, the ace of birth, something new. So it links the two um, items of symbology together. Um, this is about taking the lead from what excites you and what you sense as an opportunity for growth. It is time to expand your horizons and pursue possibilities. And then we have here ace of wands and we have keywords to go with the ace of wands. And then it carries on for the um, other cards in the deck. And then at the back, so it goes through all the cards in the same way. So I'm not going to obviously go through every single part of the card. We end on the world. And we have the image here. 
So what are we calling this? Name of artwork, inhabited initials with peacocks fighting serpents. So this just must be some of the... Um, Am I right in thinking? Am I right in thinking that this image has been cut here and rejoined here? Because the tails, it looks like a mirror image. Anyone else can see that? It looks like a mirror image there. Probably says it all in here. I'm just not reading it. But we know this is from 1260. It's a gorgeous piece of art. I can see why it's been picked as um, the motifs. Most common, common symbolism for the med peacock in medieval times, it represents eternal life. Uh, this interpretation explains its association with the fountain of life and its depictions with the serpents, the symbols of evil. Zeus, the king of the good gods, fell in love with the fair, is that low? And he transformed her into a heifer to protect her from the wrath of Hera. For revenge, Hera decided to prevent the lovers from trysting with each other by placing Lo under the watch of Argus, her favourite giant. His vigilance could not be impinged because his body was covered with eyes, but Zeus sent his messenger Hermes to rescue the fair captive. The god of tradesmen was also a gifted storyteller. He launched an intermediable stream of words that ultimately overwhelmed the guard's resistance. Argus at last fell asleep and Hermes cut off his head and allowed the heifer to escape. While Hera discovered this monstrous crime, she was overcome with grief as she had been devoted to her giant. She decided to immortalise Argos by placing the eye on the tail of her favourite bird where they became iridescent circles. The legend of Argos is well known in the Middle Ages and is found in several works. Now that I didn't know. I did not know that's why um, the eye on the feather of the peacock is there or you know that's the story told behind why the eye is there here we have um how the deck is born from um carolan or libra moon's accounts of how she fell into it she originally done um so she was she was working on an astrology project called The Mood of the Moon, and it utilises discarded images from medieval, medieval time periods as a theme, astrology being her passion um, and even more so in her second return for Saturn. Um, she has a day job and then by night time she does, you know, the moon's cycles and into tarot. And that's kind of how the deck and the images were born into what we have today. Then she has on her website a free guide to help you get going with um, tarot, learning your tarot. And we have about the art deck. So started not knowing tarot or not knowing medieval art. They were simply pictures I liked. After three years of studying tarot in 2022, I decided to go back and dig into the deck to learn more about the beloved images, um, which she's really enjoyed doing, basically. And it has included nine alternative cards in this deck to choose from. The four cards she's replaced all together. And there are others that have added small details to enhance the meanings. Um, and nobody was more thrilled to learn about the stories behind the cards than our creator herself. Um, and then she signs off here. And I love this saying that she has. We live by the sun. We feel by the moon. Learn from the cards by the light of the Libra moon. I love that. Actually, that picture is really cute. And she has her um, Libra sign in the sun sign there with the moon. So there is our... Books. If you wanted to purchase the book, it's $44, I do believe, on her website. So that's the hardback. The deck comes in, as I say, this really hefty box with a magnetic closure. We have the Leaf from Moon inside. That's the guidebook. We have a velour finish in here. And there's her um, saying again there. This is foam. So hard foam insert. Ah, we have gilt edging. Let me just take the um, paper off. Put that there, so. I have, ta ta ta. Number 64 of 750. And we have the Libra Moon. Oops, oh, we start with the Ace of Wands. Okay, so this must be the order of the book. Um, so we have the Libra Moon Sun sign in the back there. And obviously it's been signed. 
um, and printed in Italy, quite clearly says here. So it's a flexible, I've heard people say this is a nice flexible cardstock, riffles beautifully. Um, it does feel thin, but I'm guessing that's because it has this flex on it for um, the bridges amongst the community. From a size perspective, I think it's about... Um, yeah, so it's bigger than a thoth. This is the small thoth purple box, I call it. So it's a tiny bit bigger, about half a centimetre longer, um, half a centimetre wider than the box of the... Uh, miniature thought. Here we have the cards. Let's just have a quick look at the book. Um, for anyone who's familiar in some of the tarot circles, we have a gentleman called Paul who is also, I believe, named in this book. Um, and he very kindly helped me to make my decision on getting the art book as well. So um, I do owe him some thanks for his time and support in and patience in sending me some images and information about this because he um, did work on a couple of cards that have made it into the deck. So it's really nice to have. So the book starts again, which we have here with the Ace of Wands. We have a bit of information about the art. We have the keywords, which we saw in the other book. And then we have Greek mythology. So we have that. So it doesn't have quite as much information, I don't think, as the other book. Let's just, um, one second, bear with me. So we have the name of the art, the date of the art, but I don't have the artist or location quite so much on here. doesn't have the artist separately named as it does over here. It doesn't have the location as it does over here, but it does have the first bit and an art and it has the date. Keywords. Keywords are slightly different. So what do we have here? New beginnings, new creative project or period of learning, new professional goal or venture, inspiration, saying yes. And then over here we have establishing new business, which I don't have here. Wings and fly. Ah, okay. And then this bit of information is the same. So I've got some extra keywords and a bit more information about the artwork in this book. I don't know if there's any difference in the actual text there could well be I'm not sure so there might be some slight nuances in the text here as well given that we have nuances in the keywords um, so there's the difference there so if you're not a complete art historian then you know you might get away with not having the big book I'm guessing this has the extra cards in it So I think, is this the New World card that we've got? New Judgment. Two Judgments. The Sun. The Moon. Okay, so they're all in order. So we have the Moons. So this book has been created to hold the cards that are in this deck, along with its extras, um, which is quite nice to see. I just didn't see that World card in that book. I'll go back and have a look. Now we have the um, periods from which the art deck is coming from. So one card from 12th century all the way through to the 19th century. So the majority comes from the 15th and 16th century, interestingly. Um, and it tells us about the cards that have been replaced. And then we have, yeah, thank you to Paul acknowledging him. Fun learning experience. And then back to the back of the book. So I just wanted to see if the world card was same in here. Yeah, so. Why was I thinking the world card was different? 
not entirely sure, but for some reason I thought there was a different image. Probably I'm getting it mixed up with another deck, but I'm tired of Right, okay. Let's bring you down and look at the deck. This is how the deck has been put together. So I don't know the story behind this way round. But um, obviously there's an essence of collage art about this. And in this one, it's quite nice to see we've got bees in there as well, or I'm calling them bees. Five of all. That's our six, seven. I don't think I've seen a seven with somebody being stabbed by the ones before. Eight. That's a very nice card, actually. I like the kind of golden aspects of it. And our nine. <laughs> and the ten. I do need to read up on this image. I find it quite funny. It's like he's carting him off to the cave. And then we have a page of wands, knight of wands, and she's holding the little dragon. Now he's got that kind of resemblance of a devil about him, hasn't he? I think he plays right into that um, potential to be a controlling, manipulative king of wands with that image there. So these images have been um, made bigger and boldened, boldened, brightened up, made, made you know, the line work and colours are bolder. first edition. Kind of owl for the Ace of Wands that almost has that Ace of Pentacles. Um, so I guess symbolically, though, representing the suit. There's our Knight, Queen, and our King. You've got like kelp or something on there seaweed or are they air plants succulents that I'm less familiar with I was reading somewhere how this heart with three swords is a long-term depiction like predates um, RWS imagery for sort of sorrow and heartbreak. Oh, kind of devil coming in with his five of swords. With demon. Yeah, I like this one for the six. There's our seven, so we have a cat instead of a fox. Very traditional sort of nine, isn't it? Ten. The whole aesthetic and vibe of the deck is um, perfect, isn't it? It's just all in keeping with itself. Our queen of swords. 
We've got a much grander throne and audience. Our Ace of Cups. Well, they look all right, but he's not looking quite so happy and I'm not too sure what she's dropping in the cup from the tree there. It's like two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. These little thingies are, that's all over them, like leeches or something. <laughs> One too many. That's interesting. quite work out what the um, underlines are on the words but uh, that's quite fascinating it's just line underlines we have our nine I think he's one of, easily one of people's most favorite images the nine of cups we have another headless person on the right our king Oh, is that everybody done? Ah, okay, that was quick. Let's get to our full then. So this is the new full, the old full, existing full, magician, and high priestess, empress, and emperor. Lovers, when they're poking out of an apple, piece of fruit. A lot of stalk in there as well. I want to be careful. Chariot. Nice different strength. <clears throat> he reminds me of the carnival at the end of the road. One of the characters in there. So our Wheel of Fortune, Justice, she's quite amusing looking isn't she, she reminds me of a Punch and Judy character, Hanged Man, Death, there's something humorous about that. Temperance. Oh, more devil. What's he doing? So he's eating somebody and spitting somebody out at the same time. Sorry, I'm just having problems um, grabbing the cards. There's our tower. And again, we've got this couple of faces, like devouring. We've got more eyes inside the mouth of the creature. The wee star. Okay, so we've got a couple of moons. That must be the moon that's been picked for the deck. The sun. A judgment. This one's kind of interesting. I'm not quite sure what to make of it, but it's like a bunch of finger puppets. This weird wound. What have we got? Dogs or lambs drinking the blood? It's quite a religious connotation, then, isn't it? Really, that one. But judgment. That's got a very um, 
tone for your sins feel about it, isn't it? And then we have the world card. So that's a very beautiful world card. And then are these the extras. Okay, so nine of swords. Ah, uh, so we have the very traditional nine of swords and we have this one as an option. And this one. We have four of cups. So we had the man with the leeches on his legs, I think, was the other four of cups. This one. Here's a five. It's more traditional in essence, but we have a little demon there in the background. Right, so this is another fall card, alternative. We have an alternative magician to the strange man with the long nose. Oh, and another magician. So we have three magicians to choose from. An alternative devil card. Oh, that's got a real kind of devouring pits of hell-esque feel about it, isn't it? And we have moon. So I know there's three moons. So we have those ones and the one that was picked for the deck, which I pulled out because I knew there were three of those and the rest I wasn't quite so sure about. I'm not sure which one I prefer. This one or this one? The original is just a big smiling moon face, which was the image I actually really loved but hadn't realised it was in this the original deck. Um, that was the one I was going on about at the start. <laughs> and we have a different judgment. Okay. Both of those judgments feel quite religious to me. I'm not sure how I feel about them. I'm not sure how I feel about those two and which one I'm going to go with actually um probably this one i just like the idea of finger puppets it feels a bit less like praying for your sins to this one because don't have a lot of um don't have a lot of good things to say about that so from my own personal experience. Um, right, let me put my moon card back in the deck. Judgment, put that one on the end. Oops, so we'll go on here, take those ones out. I don't need those ones, those are my extras. Oops, so I'll look at the shuffle. It is, oops, a matte card stock, obviously, because it's not glossy. Um, sort of a matte rose petal finish to the um, hardback book and semi on here but not quite so much the hardback book has more of a rose uh, velvety texture the book that comes in the deck doesn't these don't but they have that I can't explain it um, not quite clumping, but I'm, I'm having problems getting them to aerate and move, should we say. That's the problem I'm having, to separate them for shuffling. But you can see, they're beautifully bendy. I'm sure I heard somebody say that this is their favourite um, deck to shuffle. Bridge. Okay, Let's see what we've got. Eight. Oh, what do you know? What that doesn't surprise me actually. That's the card I got um, was that this morning. Might have been this morning. Yeah, I think it was this morning um, from my other deck, the Tower of the Holy Light. So I had another Eight of Wands, um, unusual image to 
play with this morning. Okay, let's just have a quick look. I have one Oracle deck I want to put with this, so let's see if that works. All right, I can't think of any reason why this deck isn't gonna look good with this deck, so <laughs> I want to see how it works in real life. Let's just get ourselves a fresh, fresh page on the deck. So this is the Zama Twins Oracle by Deviant Moon. Patrick Lenz's latest creation. If you want it, second edition is currently available for um, pre-order. This is the first edition I have, um, which comes with the Z card. Second edition won't have Z card, but you never know, it might have something that's different that this one doesn't have, because um, he's always doing things like that. But it's an um, interesting deck anyway, as you can see from the images. images. And I just wanted to see how these sort of um, looked together, because I figured these are going to do... Yeah, Queen of Swords with a Harpy, the world with a Seraph. Ooh, Nine of Cups and the Butcher. Hmm, Lovers and Bedfellows, what do you think? So I haven't really worked with this deck much. I definitely haven't worked with this one apart from today, but um, they're making me laugh. So we have Three of Wands with a Monkfish. Now I don't have all the meanings for this um, deck because they're online. So I love them up as I need them. Strength with our cauldron in the cauldron pot. Magician Deliverance. That has that sort of um, as above so below-esque feel about it and the power being in your hands. Of course, Magician. So at some point I must have shuffled the deck upside down. We'll put the cards in upside down. That's weird. I managed to get my cat upside down <laughs> with the buffoon. Domination. I think it's going to work quite well. Um, Image-wise, I think, yeah, look, I mean, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? They were made for each other, I think. So, Knight of Pentacles with our drunkard. I don't know that I'd call a Knight of Pentacles a drunkard, but yeah. King of Swords with the old devil. I like it. I like it. I think it's a uh, good pairing. Right. Let me know what you think in comments. And um, if you've lasted this long, thank you for hanging out with me. Take care and have a blessed day. Bye-bye.